Hey everyone, this is Pastor Alan Hathaway. Glad you joined me for this particular sermon today. I want to talk to you again from a uh, book called Immortality by Clay Jones. It's um, Facing Immortality is my series that I'm talking about. I want to talk to you a little bit about to, today about I Want to Live Forever. And we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 10 through 12. Clay Jones, in his book, Immortality, states that there are two general ways that humans try to accomplish immortality. The first he calls a literal way, which we find in attempts to physically live forever in some way. The other second category is what he calls symbolic. And those are attempts at immortality that are based on symbolism in our lives, where we try to establish some type of a legacy or some type of a process that extends beyond this lifetime so that we are remembered or are uh, in some way uh, eulogized or kept alive in somebody's memory. <clears throat> those things are interesting for our lives. I thought about this in relationship to King Saul. King Saul had been ordered by God to destroy the Amalekite people or the Amalekite kingdom. He had violated God's intent or God's purpose in that, and he had instead saved alive the King Agag and had also kept alive all the livestock for his own benefit. Saul had gone immediately from there to Mount Carmel where he had set up some type of a monument to himself. And God speaks to Samuel in chapter 15 beginning in verse 10 and says to him, I am furious that I have made Saul king. It's interesting because Samuel's reaction there is anger, frustration with the whole process. Uh, you almost get the sense he wants to throw up his hands and quit. But God tells him he needs to go and speak to Saul. And so he, goes up, he gets up early and heads out to find Saul. When he arrives at where he thinks Saul is, the man says, well, he came to Carmel and set up a, a, a monument for himself, and then he turned and passed down to Gilgal. Samuel will eventually catch up with Saul, and the, the upshot of the whole thing is that Saul uh, says, well, I kept him alive because of the people. I kept all this stuff because of the people. And Samuel says, God desires obedience rather than sacrifice. He, and he points his finger to the reality of Saul's life is that Saul is more interested in building a monument to himself and establishing some type of a sense of immortality, that he will be remembered, that people will know his name. And a lot of us struggle with those kinds of things in our lives. As I was working through the uh, thoughts for this particular message, I thought a lot about uh, those people who do attain unusually long lives. I was looking particularly at, at uh, one lady. Her name is Jean, Jeanan uh, Clement, uh, and uh, she was a French lady. She lived in Arles, France, and she lived to be 122 years and 169 days old. Uh, she died in 1997. Very interesting lady, very interesting in the reasons that people thought that she lived to that uh, particular age. As people, we really want to live a long time. In fact, we want to be immortal. We want to figure out a way somehow to live forever. But the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 that God set a time limit on human life, and that was to be around 
age 120. That was sort of the top end of human longevity. And God does that because he says, I do not want to contest with man. I don't want my spirit to be continually contesting with humanity, uh, dealing with them in their, their desire for evil continually, their desire for their own way. One of our reasons for attempting immortality on our own is our own selfish desire to do things our own way. And it is a destructive practice. What it leads to is a world that is described in Genesis chapter 6, a world of, of violence and destruction and sin and, and self-centeredness. It is a terrible place. I'll be talking a little bit about a man by the name of Qin Shi Hung, who was the uh, first emperor of China. Uh, he lived uh, 259 BC to 210 BC. He was a powerful king, but at age 40, he suddenly uh, was concerned about his impending death, and he spent the last nine years of his life searching for some way to gain immortality. It was singularly unsuccessful, and he did some very terrible things in that process, as well as some very foolish things. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in my message today at church. But for us, we desperately want to live forever. We as humans have that desire that drives us forward. And if, if it is based on selfishness like Saul's, we will end up destroying ourselves and destroying the people around us. Because that type of direction in our lives is foolish. In his book, Clay talks about a minister and a pastor, and that kind of hits where I live. But he talked about a pastor who desperately tries to, to live as long as he can. He wants every medical technology used on him, even though it's clear that he is dying. And he talks about the sadness of that experience. In Psalm 90, beginning in verse 10, Moses, speaking of the people of Israel traveling through the desert, says, The years of our life are seventy. And if by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble, and they are soon gone, and we fly away. In verse 12, he continues with that thought and says, So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to make sense of what's going on in our lives and the problems that we face and what your purpose and will is. In Psalm 90, we are told that the average lifespan of the Israelite people traveling in the desert was to be between uh, 70 and 80 years of age. What is interesting about that is that our age uh, right now for median age uh, at death is about 78 years of age. And the reason why it has climbed to that level from the early 1900s, the early 1900s, the median age of death was 45. But by the 1950s, it had climbed up into the late 60s. And the reason for that was that infant mortality shrank considerably. At the turn of the 20th century, it was actually at 15% of those uh, who were born died. And as a result of that, it pulled down the life uh, expectancy of humans. 
The other thing that uh, brought us down quickly is that the number of deaths from infections. Uh, with the advent of penicillin in the 1940s, suddenly people began to live through infections that would uh, bring them to their death otherwise. And later on, we discovered uh, vaccinations for childhood diseases, and that again uh, eliminated a lot of death of children in the early ages. And so as a result, it pushed our life expectancy up as a result of that. And so that we're right now sitting around 78 years of age is a typical life expectancy. If we expect to live beyond 100, most of us won't. Uh, we'll be lucky if we live uh, much past 80. But the truth of the matter is that even in those circumstances, we are given those days as a blessing. God did not expect us to live forever as we are. When we try to do that, some very terrible things can happen in our lives. We can end up doing some horrible things. We end up is it were becoming a Frankenstein on our own, and I'll be talking a little bit about that. The idea of, of pulling in technology or, or trying to live as long as we can by as, as much uh, intervention as we can, and it ends up making us less human. Eternal value is not to be found in how long our lives are, but rather in who we know. If we know God, we know that he can give us eternal life with him. But that life must first pass through the veil of death. And then Christ will give us eternal life if we know him, and if we serve him, if we understand him. One of the other areas that we struggle with as humans is we, is we try to have symbolic eternal experience. And that really ends up ultimately being flat because even though I may have uh, a clone, let's say I had a clone made of myself, that clone would be different than me. They would be, it would be a different person. And that person would not, uh, when they drank a milkshake, I wouldn't be drinking a milkshake when I died, uh, no matter how much longer they survived beyond me. The truth of the matter is we cannot live symbolically into the future. Uh, we are not much remembered beyond 20 years after our lives. And those things are just realities. If you really want eternal life, you need to find it in Jesus Christ. Job would complain at the end of his life about his desire that somebody would write his, his life in a book. And in chapter 19, he says, I wish that you would write it in a book or engrave it with an iron tool in stone and fill it with lead so that it could be seen. But I know even if none of this happens that my Redeemer lives and I shall see him in my flesh. And so Job trusted Jesus Christ to deal with his circumstances. If you were to have a real eternal project, a real immortality project, it needs to start with a commitment to Jesus Christ in your life. And then you will have an immortality project that works. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. We'll hopefully see you in church.